am so excited. You know, most times whenever I have a guest on the show, I always sort of like let you guys know, but I didn't do so today. I felt like, yo, let me just surprise you. Well, I got a big, big, big surprise in the studio run town. How are you? How are you? I'm great, I'm great. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I'm so sure that once I played that 1980 track, you were like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those days. Yeah, actually. remember those yeah, days. Grinding. So, but you weren't even born in 1980. No, it was just like party like in 1980. That was like the party era, the oh, 80s. Okay, yeah, okay, so it's just right. like, let's party like it's the 80s. All right. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so one thing I know about you um, is the fact that I know that you moved to Lagos from Enugu, yeah. you know, yes, to pursue your career. Um, most people, when, you know, they make such moves like that, they often give themselves like a little time frame. Like, you know, but they say, look, if this doesn't pop off, then I'm just going to go back to school or do go whatever I'm supposed village. to do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did you literally give yourself for you to, you know, actually, you know, make a name for yourself? And if it didn't work out, you were going to leave. How long did you give yourself? No, nah, I, I didn't really give myself any time because I knew um, when we were coming here, I already knew things would work out fine. Mm-hmm. So we came here with faith. We already knew we we're going to win. So yeah. we're just like, let's just do this and just blow sharp sharp you know that's that okay. so we just did it and things worked out fine and look at where we are today so that's true that's true Feeling yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Feeling good, feeling great all the time. Okay, okay. All the time. All right, so how does it feel when you listen to your tracks played on radio or just played by fans? How does it feel? Um, I feel happy because um, it's one thing being in the studio. Mm-hmm. It's one thing trying to figure out if, if the song comes out, are people going to like it? Yeah. So. So I guess when, when I guess when the song is out and people love it, then you should be happy and be on to the next one. But I personally don't listen to my songs. So you don't listen to your songs. I don't know. Why? If you don't listen to them, how I would don't. you know what to improve on? I don't. I just know. I just, just know. I just work and yeah, it's the only experience that can make you get better in life. So okay, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so Galado. Yes, that was literally your breakthrough single. And um, on that track, you're obviously speaking about cars and money and, yeah, basically the, you know, wealthy lifestyle. Weren't you, like, you know, scared that you'd be, like, you wouldn't be able to necessarily, you know, live up to that sort of lifestyle at the beginning of your career? Yeah, um, the thing about the song Galado, um, me mentioning cars, I used, um, I used terms like that as analogy. It's not really, I wasn't really talking about the cars. I was really talking about the transition from the 1980 life to like a new run town the lamb light okay. and everything yeah because okay. right. even when i did the song i wasn't like but i knew the song was the song that was going to blow me and put me there so i was just it was just like a prophecy a prophecy yeah i was just seeing everything happen so. all right okay 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 so um they're talking about you know pressures which is what i was speaking about earlier would you say or, or what would you say actually is the main pressure that has been put on you not necessarily by yourself but by others um i think um since my song ben Ampos blew up in the caribbean mm-hmm. so i've been having this huge pressure trying to like balance the music yeah now i can't just put out music for one side you gotta put if out africa for... likes it the caribbean mm-hmm. has to like it exactly. too yeah so that's that's like the biggest challenge right now but okay I'm killing it gradually. Of course you are. You are <laughs> killing gradually. it. Gradually. Yeah, you're, you're literally amongst the artists that I know have performed as far as the Caribbean. Yeah. You, Wizkid. Tamaya. Tamaya. That's it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah that's so, it. yeah, you're killing it. Trust me. All right. So let's have a quick listen to Galado. Galado. I know that you won a lot of awards very, very early in your career. You know, as soon as you dropped Galado, the one that I, you know, really remember is, you know, the NEA for yeah. Best Collaboration. <coughs> yeah. Yes. Rondon has a cough, guys. Excuse his cough. <laughs> 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 okay, so did you expect to win awards so early in your career? I don't know. Like, I always say this about awards. Um, I'm indifferent when it comes to awards. So Why is that? means, like, if I say I just take it, so it's not like something I put my mind when I'm doing my music. Mm. I always focus on my music traveling across the world. Like in two years' time, I want to be performing in Japan. I want to like, yeah, I want to like, 
all my music to like extend to like everywhere in the world that's every part exactly. of the world that's so that's why I always focus when I'm doing my music not awards or okay. none of that yeah alright alright okay so um, your career took like another another major um, wave when you got signed to Eric Manning yeah um, under the label you released Heavy Jams obviously and also your 2015 debut album with all the drama that you know was caused by I don't know whether it was the breach of contract yeah. or whether it was you know I think at a point you even said that your life was threatened I don't know would you say that with all that now that everything's you know been swept under the rug and everything's good would you say that you still have quite a good relationship <coughs> with your record boss yeah sure yeah, yeah. sure yeah we're still so one family have been, things have been we're still one family um, working together big mm-hmm. up Eric Manny big up Mr. Dilly so I feel like um, things like that always happen like when you have like so many hands mm. in one project so mm. things like that are bound to happen so you know you like know what the mistakes are and things you should do away with yeah and things you should keep yeah right. so that was basically what happened that was basically what happened all yeah. right okay so um, moving on and even now you know trying to talk uh, touch on that topic of international recognition mm-hmm. and all that a lot of your fellow artists have been signed to international labels you know like david o sony and all that <coughs> what's your thought on that do you think it's a good idea yeah 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 of course that's a good I, that that's a good thing for the african music mm-hmm. it simply means like we're being recognized now like for mm-hmm. a record label as big as sony to want to do things which you means they believe in the sound the african sound now mm. yeah they believe it can work and they believe they can invest in it too so it's a good thing for everyone shout out to thomas we finally famous right now my name will not come forth to go by the comfort of selling my song oh you yeah, show me the receipt oh finally famous be the bad for the dog um, now on to more questions concerning you obviously um, you know with David I know that there's been this whole controversy for quite some time as to whether you wrote IA ah. or not <laughs> so whether it was your see, song I put like, see, I put like since yes, now yes like, I uh. know I know I'm not I'm not even talking about that issue what my what my issue is and what I want to you know clarify from you is you know after the whole saga and um, everything that went down what can you say can be done to protect songwriters producers and those behind the scenes uh, no, I think um, the industry will still get to that stage where the producers and songwriters like get like a structure. I, I don't think the structure, the present structure, favors the producers. Mm. Some of them, of course, already know what's up. So okay. yeah, they know how to go about their publishing and everything, mm-hmm. but not all though. And what about so, songwriters? Yeah, same thing with songwriters yeah. too, because okay. they work hand in hand every other place in the world. So okay. songwriters, producers, same mm. thing. Okay, so are you are you still writing songs for people? No, no, I'm no. not definitely not. You're not doing that anymore. Yeah, but I'll, I'll I'll love to write for Madonna though. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, let's pray that that comes to pass. Yeah. yeah well. <laughs> All right. So one thing I also know about you, apart from you know moving from Enugu to Lagos, you were actually in Abuja for quite some time. Yeah. Yes. And um, so obviously, I feel like with some of your music, you can hear all the different influences. You can hear a bit. Yeah, of, the house. Uh, yeah, the bit yeah. of the house, the house of vibe. And obviously, you have this your single called Tsu Shinkafa. Yeah. Yes. Now, please, <laughs> I need to ask you: do, Is that like your favorite food? No, that's not my favorite. So food. why did you decide? I'll just, I'll to call just tell him. I was just telling the girl that I'll eat her like Toshin Kafa. Oh, yeah, that's just gossip. Okay, <laughs> interesting, interesting, interesting. So you know, I know that on the song um, Toshin Kafa, it's not only you. You've also got uh, help me, help me. Barapapapa. Yes. From Morocco. <laughs> you've got them from Morocco. How yeah. did that come about? Like that's so crazy. All the way in the north of Africa. Because one thing about um. Well, should I say Africa uh, or music from the northern parts of Africa is that we don't really get to hear it very much. Yeah, so true, how were you able true. to get that connection? Um, my single, um, Galado, blew up in Tunisia, Morocco, like not Africa. Oh, it was wow. very big there. So this group called Barapapapa, they did like um, a parody video okay. on YouTube. And the crazy thing is they actually have more views than the original one. <laughs> oh. They have like almost 20 million views on, wow. yeah, on the parody. So... Wow. So um, I had a show in Morocco, so they were like, I should link the studio and we linked and we did a song for the album. That is crazy. That is when they crazy. just had the, <laughs> they were like, oh, this is a song. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, um, even more about you know your album and how great the songs are. One amazing, I, I, I don't want to call it collaboration because you, you guys didn't really do a song together, but he literally introduced your album, DJ Khaled. Yeah, yeah. Please let me know how that also went down. Um, sometime when was Fight Night again? Oh wow, that was like <laughs> that was ages ago. No, that was, that was last like year, last right? year, yeah, last that was year. Last year, yeah, yeah, yeah. Around there, we we're in Vegas for fight night. So, mm-hmm. um, a friend of mine who knows Kali was like, Kali is having a hosting in Vegas, so okay. we should like go there. So we went there that night, and I met Kali, and I was like, I told him I was recording my album. Mm-hmm. That I would like to play him some of the records on the album. So he gave me a time yes, the following day. So we went to um his tour bus because you know Kali doesn't really fly. He mm-hmm. like moves yeah. around his yeah. tour bus. So there was a studio in the tour bus. So. He heard some of the song and was like dope. So he just recorded the intro for the album. Then I just put it to the song. Um, uh, what's it called? Money bag. So okay, yes, that's how it came bag. about. Yes, exactly. Yeah, money bag. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Let us know one of the craziest Caribbean performances that you have had. Just, you know, just run us through a, an example of how crazy it can be out there. Um, I think that sh- should be Saint Lucia. Saint Lucia. Yeah, okay. when I was done performing, and some girl just ran to me and told me she wanted to follow me back to Africa. Oh yeah. I'm like, oh, just follow me. So, okay. so <laughs> why, why didn't you make that happen? Nah, come on. Uh, why? I had to move. You're okay with your African girls? Yeah, you know I love African women so really? much. So much. Mm. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why I don't buy that. For real, I do. I love African well, women. Well, I know that your latest single, you're obviously speaking about Ghanaian girls. Yeah. But you're not speaking about Nigerian girls. Why? I love Nigerian girls. You love Nigerian girls? A lot. Okay, we I'll do. I'll marry a Nigerian. Are you 100% sure about yeah, 100% that? Yeah, 100% sure. Yeah, no. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so, you know, with all these, like, crossover shows that you do and whatnot, who has been, like, the one person that you've met and you're just literally mind blown? Like, you're like, oh, my gosh, I've arrived. I finally met this person. <laughs> I should be my new producer. <laughs> <laughs> so, where did you meet him? Did you meet him in the Caribbean? No, no, it wasn't in the Caribbean, it was in New York. Okay, all Yeah, right. and we're working like on a project now, like crazy project. Like okay. I can't wait for the world, because it's actually a world song, it's not just like Afrobeat. Oh, we're trying nice. we're trying a new thing. We're trying to like fuse Afrobeat and other genres of music too. So Okay. It's the guy that produced um almost everything Lady Gaga has ever sang. Oh yeah. wow, what's his name? And he writes to um Fernando Wait, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fernando Garibay. Fernando Garibay. Garibay. Yeah, okay, Where's he then. from? It's, he's from he's Mexico. From Mexico. Okay, yeah, he's from Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Oh, nice, 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 nice. All right. Okay, well, um, one of my favorite songs off your album is Walahi. I love oh, it. Oh, for real? Yes. Why? Uh, it's, I don't know. I just, I feel like, you know, I can just uh, in some ways relate. I feel like you're really being honest on that track. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. Yeah. Very true. And I'm a very honest person. Yeah, I was, so. I was actually honest. <laughs> so I really, really love that one. So I think I'm going to play that one and then we'll be right back and we'll um, head over to Twitter to see what your fans are asking you. All right. So here is Runtown with Walahi, who is still, in fact, in the building with me on the takeover. <laughs> Come on, you are a major, major traveler, right? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you guys, you know, were here while the music were, you know, was playing. We, I was talking to Runtown about his thoughts on who should be president of the United States, whether Clinton. Trump or Clinton. Why Clinton? Why Clinton? Why Clinton? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, something about that man that's just fishy. I know, right? I don't trust him. I feel like I feel like, I feel like all Nigerian artists should really, really hope that it's Clinton because yeah. if not, you guys. Ah, when they affect doing, our US tour like exactly, this, exactly, can't be doing American problem. tours anymore. Especially so, yeah. now, the dollar is making sense. <laughs> and, th- and that also means that you won't be going to Kampala or, or New York uh, or so I don't know any of these Clinton cool, just enter first. cool places. Let's, yeah. <laughs> Alright, 
well my final question for you Rantown thank you so much for coming um, on the takeover I feel I would ask you do you have any regrets so far um nah <laughs> no I live my life with no regrets yeah like for real everything is there anything for that real? you would yeah, have changed yeah cause um no not, not really cause um I feel this whole fame thing is like a gift and a curse so wherever a gift comes your way it comes with a curse so mm. I just accept it that way because okay. that's that's my life so no regrets all right okay. whatsoever and i won't change anything